Hi everyone, John here with Fountain Pen Love, and today I want to talk about creating an ink journal. Now this can take on a few different forms. You can have one for your currently inked pens, or you can have one that shows a little bit more detail. I'll talk about both today and show you how to do each one. So let's go ahead and start off with the currently inked pens. I used to keep a dedicated journal for my currently inked pens, but I started bullet journaling a little over a year ago, so I've moved my tracking log into my bullet journal. So let me show you what that looks like. I basically just keep a list of the color of the ink, the type of ink, and the pen that it's in. So you can see over time, these are the different inks and pens that I've used. And this is really helpful for just basically keeping track at any given time what pens and what inks that you've used. Now, one time this came in very useful was when I discovered one of my pens had mold in it. And I could quickly look back through and see which inks I had used that pen in recently. And I could determine whether any of those inks were contaminated, if it was the pen. And it turned out, luckily, it was an ink that I had just bought. So it was the only uh, ink that that pen had gone into recently. So I knew that pen could be quarantined. I knew that ink could be quarantined and that combination I wouldn't use in any of my other inks or pens. So looking at this, you know, trying to remember what I'd, I'd used recently off the top of my head is not going to happen. But looking at this made it super simple, super easy to determine exactly what I needed to do and the actions I needed to take. So a currently ink journal could be as simple as a page in your bullet journal, or it could be a completely dedicated notebook. But basically the idea is just to write down the ink and pen that you're using. Uh, you can have a writing sample if you want to. You can uh, show how full your pen is. Anything that helps you remember uh, writing down the date that you filled it, the date that you emptied it. Um, whatever information you want to include, you are free to do. But basically this is just a way to keep track of what pens and inks you've used together. Now while this is great for a quick reference, I also have a detailed ink journal that I prefer much more. The reason is I can have a lot more information in here than just one pen and one ink that I use together. For example, in here I can show off shading, sheen, dry time, how waterproof the ink is, um, color samples, how it looks in different nibs, and then I also have writing samples for every pen that I've inked up with it. Now one thing that I want to point out is throughout this journal, I use the same two pins for all of my testing. So I have two different writing samples up here at the top, one with a more standard pin and one with a flex nib. And whether it's this uh, Sioro, whether it is this uh, Pelican ink, they're all going to be done with the same pins, which gives me a sense of consistency. So my dry times are done with the same pin no matter which ink it is, so I can have a little bit of consistency and see which ones dry faster, which ones take longer to dry. Um, same thing with the shading tests. So I can see this ink really has no shading at all, whereas another ink up here might have a lot of shading. Since it's done with the same pen, I have a fairly consistent and um, reliable test to see which inks shade more. So I'd highly recommend you do that. If you don't feel like inking up two different pens, if you don't feel like inking even one pen every single time you get a new ink, a dip pen would work just great. But I do recommend you have some consistency throughout so that when you compare one ink to another, you can see uh, what the properties are and know that it's not based on the pen, but on the ink itself. Another thing I like to do in here is track all of the pens that I fill with this ink. So you can see here, this is Emerald of Shabor, and every time I ink up a pen with it, I do a writing sample across the bottom here. And what that does, that gives me a good idea of how this ink looks in this pen. So if there's a combination I really like, I can go back, reference this, and say, oh yeah, that looked really good in that pen. I'm gonna use that more often. Or maybe that pen was a little too dry, uh, the nib was too fine, whatever the case may be didn't really look, uh, make the ink look good. So maybe I won't use that combination again. I'll use a different one instead. So this is nice for basically finding your preferences, seeing which combinations you like and giving you the ability to use them again. In the front of the book, I created a table of contents. And basically this keeps me from having to flip through every single page 
to try and find a particular ink. I still have to scan these columns, but it makes it much easier and much faster. I can also just kind of look for the color and say, oh, uh, I know what, um, you know, buttercup looks like. So I could say, here's this yellow ink. It's on page three, or sorry, page four. So I can open this up to page four really quickly and easily. And there it is. That's the Private Reserve Buttercup. So um, I did this at the beginning before I started putting any ink in here, any ink samples. I went through, um, figured out how many pages were in, the journal, or in this notebook. I numbered the pages and then I came back to the beginning, laid out a grid. I basically used a guide sheet underneath and put uh, page numbers in the front. It took a little calculating because I had to figure out how much space to leave at the front for the table of contents and then how many pages would fit in here. But, um, you know, it doesn't take that long. It's not that hard to figure out, okay, I need to leave, say, 10 pages in the front for my table of contents. Even if you have a few blank pages in between, not a big deal. As long as you know where page one is, uh, you can go from there and you can see I do have one or two blank pages in here. Um, but then you can just basically quickly and easily flip to any given ink that you're looking for and either reference it or add a new entry if you've just inked a new pen. Now another thing that I like to do when I take my ink samples and put them in my journal is to create a chromatography strip. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what this is. I'll probably co cover that in another video, but the basic idea is you put a drop of ink on here, put it in some water, and the ink and the dyes that are in the ink separate out, giving you a good idea of the different colors that make up the ink. So this is for Sailor Studio 123, and looking at it on the page here, I can see greens, pinks, kind of grays, purples. It's a very complicated ink, and looking at this, I can see there's a lot of different colors in this ink. So um, one of the reasons you might want to do this is it helps you tell the difference between two similar colors. So if there's two blues that you like, but you like one better than the other, you might see when you look at their strips, um, one has more of one color, one has more of another color, and there you go, problem solved. Now this is definitely not something that you have to do. It's something I enjoy doing. I really like seeing these colors separate out and it's, uh, you know, kind of helps me say, oh yeah, I like, more warm inks that have more yellow in them versus more cool inks that have more blue in them. But for you, you might not even wanna bother with this and just keep your ink journal totally fine. So let's say you wanna make your own ink journal. The first thing that you're gonna need is a notebook. And that's a pretty big decision that you're gonna to need to make before you start anything. Uh, a few questions you should ask yourself are, do I care about sheen and shading? Uh, because the paper that you choose, if you choose a notebook that doesn't really show off sheen, you're not going to see the sheen in the ink, and that's not going to be something you can reference when you look through your notebook. Also, do you want to use both sides of a sheet of paper? So, for example, in my bullet journal here, uh, there is some ghosting. You can see the, the colors and the inks in my writing coming through the other side, but not enough to bother me, and this is just really a quick reference. So I'm totally fine using both sides of a piece of paper, when all I'm really doing is referencing what ink and what pen I've used recently. Now, in this particular journal, I do a lot of writing. It's also thinner paper. This is the uh, Tomoe River 52G, or no, this is the 68 GSM. But you can still pretty well see what's going on on the other side here. So I only use one side of each page. So that's an important consideration to make. Do you want to use one side or both sides? Another thing to think about is the binding of your notebook. So for example, this Midori notebook, they're fantastic. They open and lay flat very easily. Uh, so when I'm writing in here, it's not a big deal. This uh, is a Taroko Enigma notebook and it actually opens and lays flat very well also, but you're gonna run into some that don't open and lay flat very easily, which can make testing somewhat difficult. Now, one thing I've run into with this, which you can probably see, is there's this significant kind of curve to the pages, whereas on this Midori, you know, even if I open to a part I haven't used yet, it's pretty easy to, easy to flatten out. And one way that this becomes an issue is if I have any pooling ink, it all runs to one side. So definitely, uh, if that's something that would bother you, check your notebooks first, or you know, buy something that's spiral bound that's always gonna lay flat. That's gonna be great, especially if you just use one side of a page 
but consider that before making a purchase. Another very important consideration is what kind of page style do you want? Now I opted for blank page. I didn't want any lines, dot grids, anything like that going on here uh, in my detailed ink journal. But again, in my bullet journal, it's uh, dot grid, which is totally fine because I'm really just using this for a quick reference. Um, but on, on this, I wanted the freedom to make things any size I want, any format that I want, and I didn't want to worry about lines, anything like that. Another thing to consider is the paper color. So Midori notoriously kind of has this greenish cream tint to it, whereas a lot of papers are just a pure white. This will somewhat affect the color and the way your inks look, whereas a pure white isn't going to affect it nearly as much. But if this is pretty much what you typically write on, if all I did was wrote in Midori paper, I'd probably make my ink journal, my detailed ink journal, in Midori as well, so I'd see exactly how the colors are gonna look on this particular paper. While I hope you found this useful and it's inspired you to create an ink journal of your own, I do have a blog post about this also with a bit more detailed information that you can reference if you need to. But basically, what you wanna remember is this is something that's for you. So you wanna make it so that it's gonna work for you, so that you'll be able to use it, reference it, and it's something that you'll enjoy keeping up. If you put in so much information that every time you get a new ink, you're like, ugh, now I have to put it in my ink journal, that's not a good thing. You wanna make it so that you enjoy doing it. This should be something that's fun to do, something that's useful for you. So make sure you're not tracking things like, um, you know, if you don't care about dry time, don't bother with dry time because it does take a little bit of time to put in here. Um, the way I do it is I basically make a mark, count to five, count to 10, count to 15, whatever the case may be. And it takes about five minutes to do everything for a fairly wet ink with slow dry times. So if you don't wanna spend that extra time, don't bother. If you have any questions or any ideas or suggestions for me in my ink journals, please leave me a comment. If you enjoy what you see and you wanna get updated on future videos, please feel free to subscribe and happy writing.